Hello and welcome. My name is Daniel Bartz. I'm the uh, tall one. And then from left to right, we've got Ian Argyle, me, Clarence Park, and Braxton Booth. And we are with Social Butterfly, a social media management system with a built-in AI content generator. And I'll let Ian kick us off with a little motivation for our project. Whether you're a business owner or not, you're probably aware that businesses spend a lot of time and money managing their social media presence. And small businesses in particular could really use that extra boost in revenue they'd gain by having an actively managed social media presence. But most small businesses don't have the time to do it themselves and don't have the budget to hire a dedicated manager. Um, so our goal is to provide businesses with software that can automate most of the process. So let's take a look at what this social media management process might look like without Social Butterfly. Uh, first, you need to decide what content to post. This could involve studying your competition and manually categorizing their individual posts to find out which kind gets the highest engagement. Uh, you could also write posts using content you already have, like blogs or videos, or you could find content from your audience and repost that. Next, you'll have to figure out when and how often to post that content. Again, you could study your competition or your own account if you have enough data. Um, either way, this is going to take a while. Next, you'll need to figure out what platforms you want to post your content to, um, log into each one of them individually, create a post, and manually do them all individually. After you make your posts, you'll need some way to measure your performance. Again, this would probably involve something like manually categorizing each post and calculating average engagement rates, or just guessing, which is usually what happens and usually doesn't work so well. So now that we've seen what social media management looks like without our software, let's see what it looks like with our software. If you don't know what to post, or you just have a vague idea, you can use our AI, which is actually OpenAI's GPT-3, um, to generate posts directly. We'll see this in action in a minute, but the AI can generate a social media post from uh, content like a blog, a video, a summary, keywords, or nothing at all. Uh, you can also create a, your post manually, of course, too. Once you've created or generated a post, you can directly post it to all the social media accounts that you've connected to our platform. Uh, no need to log into each one of them individually. And once you've made a few posts, you can measure their performance with our analytics, which will tell you things like what topics are most popular, what times work best, basic things like average engagement per post, and a lot more. And you can find all the same analytics on your competitors as well. Let's introduce our, our fictional test user, Bridget. Bridget owns a small bakery in Salt Lake City and wants to create a presence on social media. So she's created an account with Social Butterfly and she wants to use it to expand her social media presence. Let's see what that would look like. So I've logged in as Bridget and we're currently seeing the account settings page. The first thing that any user needs to do to get any real functionality out of our system is connect a social media account. As you can see, I've already connected Bridget's Facebook and LinkedIn accounts for the sake of time, but let me show you what it'll look like to connect a Twitter account. It's pretty easy. We just click Twitter, and we just click Authorize App. That'll get saved in the database, and it'll show up right here. The next thing Bridget will need to do is create a business profile. This is simply a name and description to represent a, a particular business. And the reason we need this is to provide context to our AI when generating social media posts. This way the AI knows what business the post it's supposed to generate is for, um, so it'll actually be relevant. So I'll just go ahead and hit add new profile. Now we have everything we need to start using the software. So let's say Bridget knows exactly what she wants to post about, so she can use our manual post creation tool. As you can see, we can select different accounts we want to post to, upload an image, and add text. You can see a preview of the post for each platform on the right. And if we're satisfied with what we've created, we can simply hit post. As you can see, here's the post we just created. But now, let's say Bridget doesn't really know what she wants to post. This is where our generation feature comes in. Here we can select what context we want to use to generate the post. Let's say Bridget has made some cinnamon rolls this morning and wants to have a sale to bring in customers before they go bad. She knows she wants to post about cinnamon rolls, but doesn't know exactly what to say. This would be a good time to use our keyword context tool. 
All we have to do is add a few relevant keywords and we just hit generate and we can see some pretty good posts were generated and then we can post that the same way as before. Now Bridget has made a few posts and she wants to know if it's working. She can use our analytics feature to find out. Now in reality Bridget would be more interested in the data that her competition can provide as they've been on social media longer and uh, have an online audience. So let's head over to competitor analytics. We'll be analyzing the Twitter account of Magnolia Bakery. Um, Bridget's been competing with Magnolia for a while and probably losing since they're online and she's not. So let's see what data they can give us. So right off the bat, we can see some basic information like their description, average likes and retweets, number of followers. Um, but most of that is pretty easy to find on their public account. So let's direct our attention down to the topic section. Here we use some machine learning techniques to distinguish the different topics Magnolia Bakery talks about on their Twitter. Um, you can see there's four main topics and we get a good idea of what they talk about uh, when we look at the word cloud here. We can also select different topics to view their particular details and uh, also post about a particular topic, which is just uses the keyword feature that we saw before. Uh, we can also see that we can filter by topic uh, as well, filter tweets by topic. If we scroll down, we can see the individual tweets. Below that, we can get a good idea of um, the best time to tweet by looking at the frequency of tweets by hour. So this would suggest that Bridget might want to try tweeting at oh, about 10 a.m. and see if that provides higher engagement. Um, we can also see popular hashtags and mentions. Um, next, there's statistics about the followers of Magnolia Bakery. Um, this could give us some idea of who their target audience is and it's also useful for determining if, it, if an account is using fake followers but this one looks pretty normal. Um, finally we can actually download a CSV file of the actual followers of Magnolia. Um, this is super useful because you can then upload that list to Twitter and target those people directly with ads and this could be pretty lucrative in, in some situations. And now I'd like to take just a minute to give a rundown of some of the technologies we used for the project. On the front end, we used Gatsby.js, which is a framework built around React that generates static sites. On the back end, we used Golang. Uh, we deployed our project to an AWS EC2 instance. Additionally, we built a dedicated analytics server in Python with Python's great numerical support libraries. As far as software engineering practices go, we used GitLab as a, a version control manager and ended with about 300 commits on several branches. Uh, we also used the built-in GitLab issue boards to keep track of progress and to coordinate tasks across the team. Thank you so much for your attention and for taking the time to learn a little bit more about our project. We look forward to seeing you all on Demo Day.